Good evening. Hello, guys. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Hello. Welcome to the class. Well, I can Good see a lot of people. Good evening. Hello, Carlita. Okay, I can see less people. I can see only eight people connected today, but hopefully the rest will join us later. Okay, so welcome. Welcome. We got Kenya Kandai, we got Omar, we got Karen, we got Carla, we got Luis, we got Mariana, we got Lester. So welcome. Welcome to the class. And today um, we're going to start working on section number four, or at least the topics from section number four, okay? Um, uh, well, last week, I, I just let you know, write a little bit about like um, the topics that we were going to talk about, right? And we were mentioning uh, present perfect, right? Being one of the topics that we're going to be working on. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, there you have. So guys, today is class number nine. Class number nine, look at that. So that means that um, ya pasamos el 50% de las clases, right? We're going to finish next week, ¿verdad? ¿Cuándo vamos a terminar? ¿Alguien sabe cuándo vamos a terminar la otra semana? Let's see. ¿Quién se acuerda? When are we finishing the classes? ¿Cuándo terminamos, chicos? ¿Se acuerdan? ¿Nadie? ¿Really? <laughs> Mariana says on Thursday? <laughs> that's a very good question. Bueno, Mariana no se pregunta, ¿será el 6 teacher? ¿Verdad? De hecho, terminamos el próximo viernes, chicos. Eh, recuerden que este próximo lunes es asueto, ¿verdad? Es un holiday, right? We got a holiday. Yay. Ok, tenemos un asueto, un feriado, ok. Que es para recordar pues a las personas que ya no están con nosotros, ¿verdad? Así que we got a holiday, meaning that we're not going to be on class. No voy a venir aquí y diga, no ha venido la teacher y ya son las nueve pasadas, ¿verdad? Es porque no va a haber clase, ¿ok? There won't be class. Pero sí, ese lunes lo repondremos el viernes. Así que vamos de martes a viernes, ¿ok? En ese caso, let's see, Mariana. Sí, en ese caso sería el 6, Mariana. Muy bien. Right, that would be November 6. Ok. November 6. Así que para los que se preguntan, toda la semana se los voy a recordar, no vaya a ser. ¿Verdad? Uh, yeah, we're going to have, uh, we're going to finish next Friday. Ok. Ok. Um, that's one thing. Also, don't forget, don't forget to complete the section four, section four by this week. Si usted se adelanta, no problem, no pasa nada, okay? You can go ahead and do that. Puede hacerlo sin ningún, ningún, ningún problema, okay? Así que, eh, si usted se quiere adelantar, solamente si tiene preguntas, háganmelas, ¿verdad? Remember that next week, la otra semana, vamos a trabajar section five y vamos a trabajar el final exam for final test, okay? Así que let's go ahead and start. So if you see, we got section nine, today is October 26, right? Ya el otro mes, imagínense, ya es noviembre, y pues ya el siguiente será diciembre, fin de año, y veremos que nos trae el 2021, ¿verdad? Because 2020 has been tough, okay? <laughs> so let's see. Um, have you ever eaten sushi? Have you ever eaten sushi, guys? Have you ever eaten sushi? Do you like sushi? Guys. No, I don't like. You don't like it. Okay. Yeah, I like it. You like it, okay? What's your, what, Mariana says, yes. But uh, what's your favorite, like your favorite um, presentation, right? What's your favorite version of sushi? Tell me. ¿Cuál es su favorito? Sushi is delicious, right? Delicioso. I, I, in my case, I like. <laughs> Luis dice, yes, I like it. Eat, okay? I like it. California rolls, dice Lester, okay? California rolls, okay? Very good. Let's go ahead. Vamos a agregarle algo acá. Para que se vea más delicious, veamos. 
bueno, no sé si ya habrán almorzado, ¿verdad? Ups, ¿verdad? Sí, ya habrán almorzado, sí, ya habrán cenado. But I just want to share the picture of sushi here. Espero que hayan cenado. En mi caso, almorcé tarde. Okay. Yeah, I ate lunch very, very late, guys. Like at 4. No, at 4.30. Because I didn't have time to have lunch on time. So, you see? Take a look at the picture. Oh, but it's too big. It's too big. Okay, I'm going to minimize it. And let's go ahead and put this down. Up, I'm sorry, up. And we're going to change the color. To a black one. Okay, so have you ever eaten sushi? Look at that. It looks delicious, right? Okay, so they were saying, you're welcome, Luis. They were saying, California, dice Kenya, no, I have never eaten sushi. Well, you should try. Now, in my case, let me tell you something. I, I mean, I love sushi. I like it. But, but, <laughs> I eat vegetarian sushi vegetarian sushi um yeah i think i don't i don't remember what's the name of it vegetarian sushi but it's the one that doesn't have any fish any crab um anything right no tiene nada de pescado it's just sushi like with vegetables right and i remember there are some that are called neg negritos i think what well, it's one and then the one that It's like vegetarian sushi, but I love it. I really, really like it. Bueno, pero con esto de la pandemia que ya uno casi que, bueno, poco a poco todo está regresando a la normalidad. But yeah, I, 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 I miss, I miss when I was able to go and feel free to go ahead and eat at a restaurant. Because actually right now I don't feel ready. I don't feel ready to go to a restaurant. Not yet. No, no me siento lista todavía. Probably later, tal vez más adelante, but. I'm not ready to go to a restaurant right now. Okay, so, well, guys, as you can see, when I ask you, uy, miren cómo escribí sushi. La teacher sushi Toto quizás quería escribir ahí, ¿verdad? Va, sushi, ahí está. Sushi, sushi. Sorry, guys. Have you ever eaten sushi? Very good. Now, in the platform, because I just took some material from the platform, okay, <laughs> Mariana le da risa. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mariana. Crab and avoc avocado. Sushi is my favorite, dice Luis. Mire, se escucha bastante, bastante bien. In, in my case, in my case, I, I mean, I am not vegetarian. I am not because I eat meat or fish. Mm. Chicos, quizás. Una diez veces al año, quizás lo más que como carne, cosas así. But it's once a month, quizás lo más una vez al mes, pero no creo, creo que es menos. But my husband is vegetarian, mi esposo sí lo es. So in my case, I eat like a vegetarian. Pero ese Luis de crab and avocado sushi se escucha bastante bueno. California rolls, I have heard, it's delicious too. Okay, so guys, I took some info from the platform and we're going to follow that pattern. We're going to follow the structures that you can see in the platform, okay? So we're going to have a contrast between simple past and present perfect. Simple past and present perfect. Now, simple past, we dedicated one week, one complete week to simple past, right? Si de repente dicen, teacher, no me acuerdo, ¿verdad? Yo con mucho gusto ya le voy a pasar unos screenshots, ¿ok? Con la información que vimos sobre simple past. Because with simple past, you need to uh, make sure that you know the simple past of the verbs, ¿ok? Um, just let me go back here. It was week one. Tuvo que haber sido... Por acá, I think session three, between session three and session four, okay? So, I was saying, right, that uh, that is about simple past. Now, luego yo les pregunté, este, chicos, les dije yo, how do you know? How do you know when you're going to use past simple y when you're going to use um, uh, present perfect? 
right? Y luego una de sus compañeritas amablemente nos contestó, ¿verdad? Nos dijo, eh, that you use um, present perfect when we talk about actions that started in the past, but that they still have a connection with my present. And that's true. Así es. And also, eh, well, let me go ahead and get the info first. Vamos a compartir esto primero para ya desocupar acá y ya poner las anotaciones en la pizarra, en la pantalla, perdón. Um, let me check. This is one. Cuando cargue. <laughs> This is one. Bye. Entonces, we said that these are the elements of simple past with the verb be. Pero en realidad era este que quería mostrar, ¿ok? Entonces, this is the way we do it, pero quizás voy a apartar. Voy a apartar esto. Oops, no. Esto, esto voy a apartar para que no haga esto lo voy. Ahí está. Hoy sí. Entonces, les voy a compartir esta estructura. Because this is what we started. Esto es lo que necesitamos para comprender mejor lo que vamos a ver ahorita. Porque así solo me enfoco en present perfect. Y luego hacemos un repaso de las dos cosas. No se preocupe. Oops. I'm going to share this with you in the group. Ah, pero no tengo abierto eso. Bueno. Give me one moment. Bye. Okay, so in the meantime, let me remove this from here. Y decíamos... But eh, we have to know also that when we talk about past simple, les dije yo, hay una cosa bien, bien, bien importante que debemos de saber. Okay? Let's talk a little bit about present simple or simple past. Present simple past or sim, simple past or past simple. I'm sorry. Yeah, el sueño, chicos, perdón. But con simple past, okay, dijimos, cuando nosotros usamos simple past to talk about eh, past events, hay una cosa bien importante, hay una palabra, y esa palabra es completed actions. ¿Ok? Completed actions. ¿Qué quiere decir eso, teacher? Bueno, quiere decir que en este caso, yo lo que voy a hacer es hablar de una acción que fue completada en el pasado, que ya no tiene nada que ver con mi presente, ¿verdad? Eso es un complete action, right? Entonces, cuando yo tengo complete, completed actions in the past, entonces yo sé que si me voy a referir a algo en el pasado, es porque esa acción ya fue completada. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Inició en el pasado y terminó en el pasado. A eso se refiere. ¿Ok? Ahorita les voy a dar un ejemplo. Ups, perdón. Por ejemplo. Vamos a ver. Simple past, dijimos, ¿verdad? Y hablamos de completed actions. También lo van a encontrar como finished actions. Pero, teacher, ¿cuáles son esas finished or completed actions? Ok, actions, perdón, events, digamos. Events that started in the past and in the past and Finished. Finished in the past, ¿ok? Entonces son acciones que comenzaron en el pasado, pero que igual se completaron en el pasado. Ya no son parte de mi presente, chicos, ¿ok? Y esa es una de las grandes diferencias con, con present perfect, ¿ok? Como así, teacher. Vamos a ver, vamos a un contraste. Then we got present perfect. Present perfect. Vamos a hablar un uso, que es el que mencionó nuestra compañera la semana pasada. Ok, vamos a hacer esto un poquitín más amplio. Más para acá. Ok, present perfect. Eh, con present perfect en este caso, I use it. Vamos más para arriba. We, oh my goodness. We use it when we talk about actions. That started in the past, but, but somehow they have a connection with my present, right? ¿Cómo así, teacher? ¿Cómo así que comenzaron en el pasado pero tienen una conexión con mi presente? Bueno, ya lo vamos a ver bien, bien, ¿ok? Now I will give you some examples. Vamos a hacer, vamos a dar unos ejemplos. 
Veamos, text. Very good. Veamos. Yo puedo decir, tichos, tichicos. Oh, 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 oh. Se me está lengua la traba, right? Yo puedo decir, in my case, I worked at a, at a bank. Trabajé para un banco durante casi, bueno, durante tres años probablemente, un poquito más. Entonces yo puedo decir, I, I worked there. Trabajé allí, I worked there for three years. I worked, bueno, pongámosle en el banco. I worked in the bank, in the bank for three years. Teacher, ¿y qué hacía ahí? I was an, a bilingual administrative assistant. Era asistente administrativa bilingüe, ¿ok? Entonces, I worked in the, ba in the bank, in the back. Oh, my goodness. Ya tiene sueño la teacher. Ok, I worked in the bank for three years. Ok. Entonces, what does that mean? La pregunta es, ¿trabajo ahí todavía? Sí o no. Do I still work in the bank, guys? Respondan. Do I, do the teacher, I mean, does, does the teacher work in the bank? Dice Mariana, no. Ok, and that's true. I don't work at the bank anymore. Así es, así es, Kenia. I don't work there. Okay, so we're going to we're going to put it into parentheses. The teacher doesn't work in the bank anymore. Ay, dale, come back. Bank anymore. Ya no trabaja ahí la teacher. Okay. Very good. Pero qué sucede acá abajo? Acá abajo, pues tendríamos algo más o menos así. En este caso. ¿Verdad? Eh, digamos que yo aún no he renunciado. Okay? Entonces yo digo, I have worked in the bank for three years. Ok, I have worked in the bank. Ah, ya lo cerré. Voy a tener que quitar y hacer otra vez. Ok. But this time I'm going to, oh, I'm going to. Do it like this. So, I have worked in the bank for three years. Okay, and we can say, la pregunta es, ¿trabajo todavía ahí? Si yo digo, I have worked in the bank for three years, do I still work there? ¿Trabajo todavía ahí? Si yo digo, I have worked in the bank for three years. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Trabajo o no trabajo todavía ahí? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No veo su respuesta, chicos. I have worked in the bank for three years. What do you think? Do I still work there? Yes. Exactly. Kenya says yes to, ok? So, en este caso, the teacher oops, still works there. La teacher todavía trabaja ahí, ok? Entonces, a eso se refiere, chicos. A eso se refiere cuando yo digo que cuando uso simple past is to talk about an action, a completed action, a finished action in the past. Right. Es una, sí es algo que comenzó en el pasado, pero que concluyó en el pasado. It is not part of my present anymore. Lo único que puede tener conexión conmigo del pasado es que lo pongo en mi CV, ¿verdad? Como una experiencia laboral. Eso es todo. But I don't work there anymore. Pero si yo digo, I have worked in the bank for three years, yo he trabajado en el banco por tres años, that means that I still work there. Todavía trabajo ahí. ¿Por qué? Because it's an action that started in the past. Es una acción que comenzó en el pasado. Por ejemplo, si yo digo tres años, ¿qué? qué? Tres años, digamos, los cumplo en el otro mes, en noviembre. Quiere decir, quiere decir que hace tres años, en un noviembre, yo comencé a trabajar ahí. So, the action continues. Todavía continúa. The action continues. Right? So that means that I still work there and the action will continue. 
luego probablemente yo renuncie y entonces ahí voy a decir, again, I worked in the bank for three years, but I don't work there anymore. ¿Ok? Entonces, eso es una gran diferencia. Another example. Vamos a ver otro ejemplo. Text. Very good. And this time I want this text to be red. Very good. Entonces, vamos a hacer otro ejemplo acá. Siempre con simple past. ¿Ok? Let's see. I lived in that... I lived in this... No, I lived in the neighborhood. I lived in the neighborhood for 10 years, right? I lived in the neighborhood for 10 years. Oh, pongámoslo de otra forma. Vaya. Tal vez no en, ese, en, este, en esta colonia. I lived, I lived in this house for 10 years. I lived in this house for 10 years. Todavía vivo ahí, chicos. Si yo digo, I lived in this house for 10 years, ¿viviré todavía ahí? No, right? Probablemente yo esté de visita y yo le esté contando a la persona, como pasa el tiempo, I lived here for 10 years, pero ya no vivo más aquí. So, I don't live here anymore. Estoy de visita nada más, ¿ok? Y, pero ¿qué sucede cuando es ya lo contrario? ¿Verdad? ¿Qué sucede cuando ya es con present perfect? Bueno, veamos. Yo voy a decir, I have lived in this house for 10 years. ¿Vivo todavía aquí, chicos? Do I still live in this house? Si yo digo, I have lived in this house for 10 years. Very good. Exactly. I still work here, right? I still live, perdón. I still live here. Todavía vivo aquí. Okay? I still live here. Todavía vivo aquí. Okay? Entonces, this is the way, this is the way we're going to use present perfect. Okay? I'm going to take a screenshot. And I will send it to you, okay? Les mandé el de press. No, no les mandé, verdad? No les he mandado el anterior. Wait. Eh, intermedio. Acá está. Wait. I have it here first, and then I'm going to send it to you. No yet. Sí, ahorita, ahorita. Wait. Wait. Aquí está lo del simple pass first. Aquí está lo del simple past first. Voy a minimizar todo esto. Wait. Ok, ahí está simple past. Y vamos a enviar estas notas que acabamos de completar. Ok. Okay, there you go, guys. Say stand. Okay, very good. So that was about that was about like the introduction, right? It's como la introduction of uh, what I wanted to talk about, right? So um, take a look at the examples. It says use the simple past for completed events at a definite time in the past. Again, use the simple past for completed events, okay? So what are the things that we're going to highlight from here? That's gonna be this, okay? Simple past, verdad? Simple past, para qué? For completed events at a definite time, okay? For example, ¿qué puedo decir como definite time teacher? Oh, I can say, I went to the party last Friday. I went to a party last, last Friday, right? And also, well, let's go ahead and underline the second part. Give me one moment. Pero ¿qué sucede con present perfect? Okay, present perfect is for 
events within a time period up to the present. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Dentro de un periodo hasta este momento. ¿Ok? Another example could be, yo les puedo preguntar, for how long have you studied English? Right? ¿Por cuánto tiempo has estudiado inglés? And you can say, ah, teacher, I have studied English for one year. Right? Or I have studied English for six months. Eso, a eso se refiere within a period of time. Right? Entonces, take a look at the examples. Have you ever eaten snails? Guys, en serio, have you ever eaten snails? Have you ever eaten snails? No, I haven't. <laughs> Carlita said, no, I haven't. No, actually, no, guys. I see, no. I'm sorry, but I, I wouldn't try them. I see, yo creo que... No, chicos, me desmayo. <laughs> I don't like them, so let me check. Creo que por aquí vi a alguien que estaba comentando. Let me open the chat. <laughs> no, yucks. This is Brian, yuck. Okay. Uh, well, actually, there are some people that li like them, right? Well, anyways. So then it says, yes, I have tried them last month. Oh, okay, last month. Did you like them? Yes, I did. They're, they were delicious, okay? Now, in this case, if you ask, did you like them, right? Si usted se fija en la primera parte, cuando yo pregunto, have you ever eaten snails? Here I am referring to the experience, right? ¿Alguna vez lo has hecho? Have you ever? Cuando yo agrego la palabra ever, me refiero a eso, experiencia. Have you ever eaten snails? Yes, I have. Or no, I haven't. That's going to be the answer, okay? Pero cuando yo le pregunto, did you like them? Right? Yes, I did. That's a completed action in the past, right? Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? Have you ever been to a Vietnamese restaurant? And he says, or she says, no, I haven't, but I ate at a Thai restaurant last night. Okay. Did you go alone? So a completed action. Did you go alone? No, I went with some friends, right? So these are some examples, pero creo que más bien lo que yo quiero como highlight, como resaltar de todo esto es esa parte, ¿verdad? De eh, esto, ¿ok? Esta parte del uso, ¿ok? Of the simple past y present perfect, ¿ok? Entonces, just don't forget that. We use simple past to talk about completed events at a definite time, right? In the past, you use a present perfect to talk about events within a time period up to the present. Así como yo se los eh, compartí en el chat, ¿verdad? Una acción que empezó en el pasado, pero que todavía continúa en el presente, okay? Do you have any questions? Después de esa explicación, hay preguntas, chicos. Do you have questions? Is everything clear? Right? ¿Tiene alguna duda? Uh -huh, guys. Díganme, chicos, si tienen alguna duda. No? It's clear for me. It's clear like water or like horchata. <laughs> clear. Like horchata. <laughs> like horchata. <laughs> ok, entonces hay que... Hay que removerla, ¿verdad? No, don't worry, guys, don't worry. Tenemos la semana, las cuatro lecciones para seguir hablando de present. Perfect. Y simple past, ¿ok? But right now it's just like the main thing, right? Like the introduction, because then tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to have some practice, ¿ok? And I need you to, how can I say it? I need you to try to differentiate them, right? So to identify which is the tense that probably you would need. Porque si bien es cierto que usamos, eh, digamos, tenemos como esos dos main, ¿qué les puedo decir? Esos dos main uh, uses, no quiere decir que solo son esos, ¿verdad? Así que ya vamos a ver bien eh, qué más vamos a encontrar al respecto, ¿ok? Así que if you don't have any questions, let me clear all my drawings, ¿verdad? And let's move on. Oops, sorry. Clear my drawings and close. Very good. Ok. So, what about the structure, right? What about the structure? Now, si ustedes se fijan, chicos, la estructura del present perfect es, pero casi que idéntica, pero idéntica al español, como así, teacher. En español, nosotros utilizamos siempre un auxiliar. 
¿verdad? Por ejemplo, yo he trabajado aquí por tres años. Es un ejemplo, ¿verdad? Yo he trabajado aquí por tres años. What does that mean? ¿Qué significa? Que yo estoy agregando algo que me ayuda para completar el sentido de la oración. E, el a, ellos han, ¿verdad? Etcétera. Entonces, en inglés tenemos have, right? Have. But when we use have, we also know that it is an irregular verb, right? It is an irregular verb. So, si yo sé que son irregular, yo sé que con I, you, we, they, and, and, plural nouns, I'm going to use have. Let's go ahead and add that here. Give me one moment. Okay, acá. Okay, I, you, we, they, and plural nouns, ¿verdad? And plural nouns. Y cuando yo tengo, cuando yo tengo has, cuando yo tengo he, she, it, and singular nouns, yo uso has, okay, has. Entonces yo no voy a decir she have. She have completed. No, you were said she has completed, right? Because I'm talking about third person singular. I'm talking about her. So she has completed, right? So be careful with that. Now, what happens with with the with the structure? Quizás en esa parte, pues ahí pueden ver la estructura del have you ever. Cuando yo pregunto have you ever, Pretty much what I'm doing is asking about experience. Asking about experiences. Have you ever, okay, have you ever. Ahora bien, com completando la idea que les comentaba sobre que es un tense que se parece bastante al español, hay que recordar también que necesitamos pasado participio. Y ahí es donde entra esa parte de los verbos, esa, esa columna de los verbos, ¿verdad? Porque tenemos base form, la primera columna, la segunda tenemos simple past, y en la tercera tenemos present perfect, I mean, past participle, perdón, past participle. Entonces, ya cuando llegamos a esa parte es como que, no, teacher, ya no. Ya solo el simple past, present perfect, ya no. Perdón, past participle, ya no. Pero sí lo necesita, porque para utilizar o hablar o expresarse con los perfect tenses o los tiempos perfectos, necesita los pasados participios de los verbos. Así que, ¿se acuerdan de las listas que les entregué? Como ya se aprendieron todo lo que está en simple past, ahora nos vamos a mover a past participle, ¿ok? Entonces, el past participle de los verbs es lo que yo necesito para present perfect. Past participle of verbs es lo que yo necesito para present perfect. Ejemplo, aquí tienen um, the structure. Have you, have you ever eaten sushi? Have you ever eaten sushi? Has she ever, has she ever visited London? Has she ever visited London? Entonces, aquí es donde entra el pasado de los verbos irregulares y el pasado de los verbos regulares. Do you remember we studied the rules? Vimos las reglas para convertir los verbos regulares a pasado. The same rules, the same rules are applicable for past participle. ¿Ok? Ahora bien, ya hablé yo bastante de la introducción del tema. Ahora necesito saber sus comentarios al respecto. ¿Ok? I want you to go to the chat. I want you to go to the chat and type at least three questions with have you ever. Three questions with have you ever. Type three questions with have you ever. Okay. Go ahead. I would like to see your notes. Okay. Take your time. You have some minutes. Take your time for you to come for you to uh, type three questions. Three questions. Give me one. Let me get let me get the water. There's no more water. Oh, well. Okay, three questions, right? Ahí en el chat. Have you ever, have you ever been? Diría yo, have you ever been to the beach? 
porque cuando hablamos de experiencias de haber estado en algún lado, have you ever been? Have you ever been to the beach? Uh, have you ever been to the beach? Have you ever flown a kite? Okay. Fly, flew, flown. Have you ever flown a kite? A kite. A kite. Se escribe así. A kite. Have you ever traveled? Es regular. Have you ever traveled? Very good, Carlita. Traveled to another country. Have you ever killed a cat? Oh my goodness. Have you ever thought with your best friend? Okay. Have you ever seen El Cipitillo? Okay. Have you ever cooked pizza? Have you ever slept in the bus? <laughs> That's a good one, Kenya. Have you ever slept in the bus? Okay. Or have you ever fallen asleep, right? Have you ever fallen asleep? Asleep on the bus. En el bus. But have you ever fallen asleep on the bus? Y ahí el question mark, perdón. Very good. Very good. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and get the questions. Let's see. Give me one moment. Let me go ahead and get some of the questions. Have you ever? Have you ever? Continuing, continuing. Have you ever? Have you ever? And I'm going to prepare the questions. This is Brian. Have you ever dreamt with, with your crush? Have you ever dreamt? with your crush have you ever driven a ferrari have you ever fought with someone okay very good very 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 good just let me get the questions here so i can have them ready for the activity have you ever gotten a gold medal okay have you ever gotten a gold medal very good Continue, continue, porque esas son las que estoy preparando para la actividad. Okay, I'm getting all of the questions together. Okay, very good. Have you ever been to the beach? Have you ever fought with your best friend? Have you ever killed a cat? Have you ever traveled? Mm -hmm. To another country. Very good. Have you ever flown a kite? Okay, pretty good. Excellent. Okay. Just let me add capital letter. Have your grandparents told you about C1 Nava? Okay, very good. Very good. Okay, excellent. Have you ever flown a kite? Have you ever traveled to another country? Have you ever killed a cat? Have you ever fought with your best friend? Have you ever been to the beach? Have you ever seen a cipitillo? Have you ever cooked pizza? Have you ever fallen asleep on the bus? Have you ever dreamt with your crush? Oops, with, oops, with your crush. Have you ever driven a Ferrari? Have you ever fought with someone? Have you ever gotten a gold medal? Very good. Have you ever gotten a gold medal? Good job, guys. Have your have your grandparents told you about La Ciguanaba? Very good. Have you ever baked a cake? Yeah, in my case I have. Aunque sea de esos que venden solo para preparar en el super, pero sí. Have you ever cooked? Have you ever drunk? Beer. Very good. Have you ever drunk beer? No, guys, en mi caso nunca le he probado. No me llama la atención. Have you ever drunk beer? Have you ever been to Canada? Oh, have you ever fought with your sister? Very good. Um, have you ever have you ever cheated on on an exam? On an exam, Carlita. Have you ever cheated on an exam? Very good. Have you ever been to Canada? Have you ever, have you ever been to Canada? Let's see. 
have you ever no, solo que ahí se les puede en español have you ever eaten creo yo octopus have you ever sent a karaoke that's a good one have you ever climbed a mountain ah ok ahí estaba la corrección perdón Mónica ok have you ever sung at karaoke ok very good have you ever heard pop music ok vaya chicos ¿cuántos somos? Let's see, we're 12. So I'm going to assign three groups, okay? Have you ever spoken in English on the phone? <laughs> yeah, Carlita, yeah. Hundreds of times, cientos de veces. Okay, so very good. Now, guys, I'm going to divide you in three teams. Lo voy a mandar a los breakout rooms. Y en los breakout rooms van a discutir las preguntas que hicimos, okay, entre todos. Ok, so let's go ahead and, uh, pero participen chicos, acuérdense que ese es el único momento que tienen para interactuar con sus compañeritos. Ok, así que I'm going to give you, bueno, three runs and I will give you probably, probably five minutes, ¿verdad? Así que no se salgan chicos, denle clic a aceptar la invitación y ahorita llego yo a dejarles las preguntas, ok? Aquí están las preguntas. With your best friend. Bueno, mire que no me deja con... Bueno, forget it. No me deja mandar las preguntas. How was your weekend? It was uh, very busy. Guys, I will leave you the questions, okay, in the chat. Ahí están las preguntas en el chat, okay? Okay, teacher. Welcome. We can hear you. There you have the questions, okay? Ahí les he dejado las preguntas, chicos. If you see, you can go ahead and discuss those questions, okay? Okay, teacher. Okay, so I'm going to move to the next breakout room. Okay. Okay. Uh, that uh, apply. But I would like to to wake someone. Oh yeah. Beer with my friends. Okay, me too. Um, um, have you ever <laughs> cheated on an exam? Um, no, I have I have never cheated on my exam. Hard to okay. believe. But what's the question? Have you ever cheated on an exam? Yes, uh, probably. <laughs> and you? What's the question? Oh, what's you the question? Ever... Have you ever cheated on an exam? Have you ever cheated on an exam? Oh, um, yes. <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah, that, yes, I have. Yes, yes. yes, I have. Very good. Have you ever gotten a gold a gold medal? Yes. 
Yes, um, I was uh, chair. So guys, welcome, welcome back. Okay, I could hear that some of you were asking the questions that something really, really good, right? Thank you for participating. Okay, good job. So thank you for participating. It was nice uh, to listen to you speaking in English, okay? So guys, do you have any questions so far? Do you have any questions so far? Hasta el momento, ¿verdad? So far, do you have any questions? Okay, it seems that you don't. Okay, no hay hasta el momento. Eh, antes de seguir, just remember, ¿verdad? Recuerde que eh, esta semana es la sección 4, no olvide trabajar en ello, ¿verdad? Yo sé que ustedes ya son level intermediate, ¿verdad? Así que saben muy bien lo que tienen que hacer. Ok, en igual, si, si, si me pueden hacer el favor de ir viendo en la plataforma alguna sección con la que tengan dudas o preguntas y me avisan para poder trabajarla aquí, porque si la trabajo aquí, entonces ya eso me ayuda a contestar dudas de otras personas, ok. Así que, coming back to the topic, coming back, you know, to the topic that we started, uh, we said, I, I could hear, right, escuché a algunos que, Eh, siempre, pues, um, contestamos de la forma correcta, ¿verdad? Con el, la yes, no question, ¿verdad? Si es yes, yes, I have. O si es no, no, I haven't. Si es para tercera persona, yes, she has. Or no, she hasn't, right? Have you prepared the report? Have you prepared the report? I can say, yes, I have. Or no, I haven't. Does the secretary complete the report? Does the secretary complete the report? Yes, she has, or no, she hasn't, right? So that is about yes, no questions, okay? Yes, no questions. And that is um, basically what uh, you can find on this slide, okay? No, now, here you have more examples. It says, have you ever been to a picnic at the beach? Have you ever been to a picnic at the beach? Have you ever eaten Mexican food? Have you ever eaten Mexican food? Have you ever visited Europe? Have you ever visited Europe? Have you ever eaten exotic food? Have you ever eaten exotic food, right? So here you have more examples of the questions with have you ever. Well, I don't know if we're going to have the time today, guys, but still, if we don't, at least I would like to have an introduction on this particular topic. Okay, we're going to we're going to check a little bit of food vocabulary, food vocabulary, okay, or vocab vocabulary, right, vocabulary. So um, I have prepared some uh, pictures with vocabulary words for you. So most, I will, most likely, no, I would say that I would prefer to go ahead and share them with you tomorrow, right? Because right now I know that after the class you're tired and you will probably just have something for dinner and then you will go to bed, right? So what I will do is that tomorrow early in the morning, I would like to send you vocabulary words. Teacher, ¿y qué nos va a mandar? ¿Qué vocabulario necesitamos para esta unidad? Number one, you need cooking verbs. Cooking 
verbs. So I have a list of cooking verbs for you. I have also a list of um, appliances, right, in the kitchen, vocabulario de la cocina, right? Also, I have general vocabulary about food, okay? Entonces, tenemos tres cosas, dijimos cooking verbs, appliances in the kitchen, todas las cositas que hay en la cocina, and then we have also um, a food, food in general, right? Food in general, so I will share that vocabulary with you. Okay, so take a look at the, at the, at the screen, okay? Now, here you can find a recipe. Here you can find a recipe, una receta, a recipe. Now, take a look at the ingredients. We got three tablespoons of peanut butter. Do you like peanut butter? ¿Les gusta la peanut butter? A mí me encanta, but with jelly, con mermelada, right? Peanut butter. Yes, I like it. Okay, good, Carlita. Actually, in my case, I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I really, really like them. Oops, I there was someone here in the chat, but a ver. <laughs> yes, teacher says Brian. Yes, it's delicious, right? Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So you need three tablespoons of peanut butter. No, we have the teaspoon and we got the tablespoons, right? Las teaspoons son unas bien chiquitas, pero las tablespoons son bien grandes, verdad? Es como la cucharada de mesa, digamos así. Okay, tablespoons son las grandotas y las teaspoons son las pequeñitas. Okay, entonces tenemos three tablespoons of peanut butter. We need one banana mashed, o sea, machacada, ¿verdad? Mashed o oh, en puré, digámoslo, ¿verdad? Two slices of bread, two tablespoons of butter. Y yeah, next to it, it says melted, right? Derretida, okay? So, Then you have some vocabulary words. Y hay algo que nosotros usamos en simple past, chicos. Y eso es sequence adverbs. Sequence adverbs. Teacher, ¿y para qué nos sirven los sequence adverbs? ¿Qué son? Those are words that will help you organize your ideas. Le va a ayudar a ordenar sus ideas. ¿Se acuerdan cuando tenían sus presentations, presentaciones en, en la escuela, right? We have presentations at school y decía, vayamos primero y luego después, ¿verdad? So there are some words that you use in the introduction, like first or first of all, right? Then, after that, okay, finally, etc. So we, we follow a sequence, right? Entonces, take a look at the recipe. We got, we have a sequence here too. It says, first, mix. Mix the peanut butter and mashed banana together, right? Then, lightly toast the slices of bread. Lightly toast. Next, Spread, express, spread the peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast. After that, close the sandwich and put it in a pan with melted butter. Finally, fry, fry the bread until it's browned on both sides, okay? So take a look at the pictures, okay? Take a look at the pictures. Okay, so uh, I didn't organize them for today because actually that's the activity for tomorrow. Pero entonces, teacher, ¿cuáles son entonces esas palabras que yo necesito saber? Aquí está. Son las sequence adverbs. Sequence adverbs. Siempre, siempre, chicos, los vamos a utilizar cuando nosotros estamos hablando en pasado. ¿Por qué, teacher? Porque cuando, por ejemplo, yo quiero describir una situación en el pasado, algo que sucedió o que estaba en progreso a ese, en ese momento, entonces yo utilizo los sequence adverbs. ¿Para qué más, teacher? I use them to explain processes. Para explicar procesos, como en este caso. ¿Cuál es el proceso? I'm cooking. is a recipe, right? So I am going to use them to explain um, a process, right? Examples first. Mix the peanut butter and banana together. Es lo mismo. Then, toast the slices of bread. Next, spread the mixture on the toast. After that, put the sandwich in a pan with butter. Finally, fry the sandwich until 
it's brown on both sides. Dígame, Carlita. Dígame. You raise your hand, Carla. Tenía alguna pregunta, Carla, porque levantó la mano. No. Yes, yes, sí. yes. Uh, the sequence Albert is like a connection when you talk uh, was I don't know was someone or or I I don't know but I'm not sure. Okay, Can so you actually, explain me that they are just sequence words. Son sequence words. Le ayudan a tener una secuencia cuando usted está hablando o explicando It's like el proceso. A, a connection when you talk with someone else. No, actually it's not a connection. It just shows sequence. Solo demuestra secuencia. O sea, coherencia con el proceso. Primero esto. Después, después va lo siguiente. Next, ¿verdad? Siguiente. Después de eso y finalmente. Solamente expresan secuencia. Connection, probably, cuando usted me dice connection, puede hacer que sea de una idea con la otra, que hay una conexión entre la idea que yo estoy presentando, la siguiente idea y luego la siguiente idea, ¿ok? So, it depends. Uh -huh, right. uh -huh. ¿Así? Uh, yeah, yeah, but the sequence servers only I'm going to use when I want to talk about recipe. No, not only, not only for a recipe, no necesariamente. Lo que les comentaba es que usamos los sequence albers para, dar, para explicar un proceso. Puede ser cualquier proceso. Incluso cuando usted pasa a presentar algo, ¿verdad? Delante de sus compañeros, usted comienza con an introduction first. Okay, good morning, classmates. Today, I'm going to talk about my favorite food. Then, I'm going to give you some examples. After that, I'm going to show you some pictures of the food that I can prepare. And finally, I'm going to give you a sample. Me voy a dar una muestra de la comida que traje. Entonces, it's just a sequence, okay? Los sequence y adverbs solo me ayudan a mí a darle una secuencia a lo que yo estoy explicando, ya sea un proceso, ya sea una historia en el pasado. Por ejemplo, cuando yo le cuento a alguien sobre mi pasado, yo agrego sequence adverbs, ¿verdad? Mira, primero empecé trabajando en aquel lugar. ¿Verdad? Después de eso me moví para otra empresa y ahí aprendí un montón de cosas y ahí conocí a fulanita y a fulanito. Después de eso, después de, siete, después de cinco años me moví a la siguiente empresa y ahí aprendí eso, aprendí lo otro, terminé mi carrera, etc. Y finalmente vine a parar de este trabajo, ¿verdad? Y aquí pues los conozco a ustedes, he logrado una mejor posición, etc. No importa de lo que esté hablando, ya sea en inglés o en español. Usted siempre va a necesitar los sequence y adverbs para darle secuencia a lo que usted está contando. Usted está contando una historia, sequence y adverbs. Usted está contando un proceso o explicando un proceso, sequence, frequent, perdón, sequence adverbs. Sequence adverbs. Usted está explicando una receta, sequence adverbs. Usted está, usted está presentando algo a sus compañeros de clase, sequence adverbs. Los teachers, estamos explicando un tema. Sequence adverbs. ¿Qué es lo primero que yo les digo? Ok, guys, first we're going to do this. After that, we're going to do that. And finally, we're going to do this, right? Entonces, no sé si contesto su pregunta, Carla. Yes, teacher, thank you. You're welcome, ok? Well, guys, um, I'm going to stop the class for today, ¿verdad? But tomorrow, we're going to continue. Solo don't forget. Don't forget to practice, I um, mean, to read and to... Try to memorize the verbs, ¿ok? Los verbos les van a servir un montón con present perfect, ¿ok? Recuerden, no es simple past, es present perfect. Y para, para, las, para los regulares con pasado participio, necesito que repasen las reglas que vimos para convertirlos a pasado. Y yo creo que con eso, pues, estaríamos bien, porque sí lo vamos a necesitar. We're going to need that, ¿ok? Así que, if you don't have any questions, thank you very much for joining, and I'll see you tomorrow, ¿ok? Take care, good night, and enjoy your meal. Buen provecho para los que van a comer, okay? Bye bye, guys. See you good tomorrow. Night. Good night. Bye, teacher. Good night. Bye. Good night, teacher. Good night, Monica.